Hi, everybody. I just wanted to say hello. We've got a few minutes to go. I see Brad has joined us. I'll just give the audience another couple of minutes until we start. I'm very excited. And Brad has no hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. It must be midsummer where you are. Can you guys hear me okay? Absolutely. All right. Great. Yeah, it was time for it to go. So that's part oh, of the challenge. Okay. As you start channeling too long, you go bald. <laughs> I'm just about <laughs> ready to cut off all my hair as well. <laughs> uh, uh, it was just, yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. Should we, can we just give people just another minute and just see if anyone else? Yeah, we can, we can begin yeah. whenever you're ready. Whenever okay. you're ready. We can start. Wonderful. Thank you. My panther has joined us. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> We've been going the whole day since nine o'clock this morning. Oh, good. So very revved up and in the portal. And it's just your morning, hey, Brad? Yeah, it's, uh, it's almost nine o'clock. Oh, fantastic. All right, just one minute and then we can start. Okay. All right, I want to give a warm welcome to Brad Johnson from the New Earth Teachings. Um, Brad, thank you so much for joining us today on our South African Lions Gate. It's six o'clock here and I know it's uh, morning time for you in Canada, right? Yes. Um, I have been a fan of yours for a long time watching many things as uh, many people that I know in South Africa that have gained incredible wisdom and guidance and healing and information and um, just so many things from you. So I'm so happy that you could be with us today on this special day. And mm -hmm. I know your journey is taking you into some changes as well soon. Yep. Yes, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was in South Africa in 2019. I was doing a tour there with Michael Tallinger. Okay. And I was able to just kind of walk around the city of Johannesburg as well, too. And I got these visions that there would be some tough times ahead, right? I could basically see a lot of things happening in Johannesburg because I could really just feel the pressure. There was a lot of pressure in Johannesburg uh, with people. I could just see them walking down the street. They just, they weren't all there, right? And it was almost like, a, it's almost like watching a dam about to burst. And that's kind of what I felt. And I felt in a couple of years, I think there's going to be some intense times here, but it's going to go for the better. It's going to be for the better because it's going to really uh, come, come forward where there's going to be this feeling of oppression is going to be countered, right? So there's, there's counter forces that are taking place. I was actually just talking at a, re a previous South Africa online event as well too about this, right? Uh, and just saying that, yeah, there's, there's some times ahead. Right now, there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes, right? So a lot of things that you're not going to find in media or even alternative media as well, too. There's a lot of changes happening, right? Old leaders being taken out, basically people being arrested, detained. Uh, new, la new leadership is going to be coming forward. There's going to be a lot more people-powered energy that's going to be coming to South Africa. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a stretch, right? There'll still be some time for that. But there's, uh, you could say there's basically justice and action being taken place behind the scenes. Um, so again, in the next few months, you're going to see that you're, you're, we're, you're basically birthing a brand new South Africa, right? 
that is really what's going to be happening. So it's not even just South Africa, it's the entire world. As we get into 2022, there's going to be a bit of a grace period, right? Between 2022 and 2024, that'll be a grace period where there'll be some definite changes, new leadership will be coming together and everything will be put together. It's like new spokes upon the wheel being put in place. And there's going to be um, just new systems taking place, new authority taking place. And it's just rooting out all of this old corruption that is going to take another few more years to completely root out, but it is going to happen. So that'll be around the 2025 to 2031 years. It's a span of renewal, which means we're cleaning out a lot of the old garbage that has been on this planet for a very long time. <clears throat> but when we get into the early 2030s, it's clear sailing from there, right? So 2020s, the, the 2020s decade is, is an intense one, right? Uh, fortunately, we do get this small grace period of 2022 to 2024, just where everything is being put into place, everything properly that needs to be put into place is being put into place. Uh, I think the whole COVID situation will end uh, probably no later than April of 2022. Right? It'll just run out of steam at that point. So there's just going to be a lot more um, intense working behind the scenes, uh, rebalancing everything, kind of shifting uh, these powers of authority altogether, moving much more into a counterforce alliance or a white hat alliance, you could say. So that is where we're going uh, as a collective. And as, like I said, it's not just South Africa. That's what's happening to the entire world right now. Every country that basically has some form of government is being turned on its head right now, right? So some, some countries will go quickly with this, some will take more time, but nonetheless, every country upon the planet is being affected. It's basically at that point where not one stone is being left unturned, right? So that is what's taking place is <clears throat> new leadership, new balances of power, so to speak, balances of authority and uh, clearing out the old and letting the new come in. Mm. Yeah, it's been amazing listening to you over the years. I mean, even last year, which was a super tough year, um, just sort of getting the, the year spans and having them sort of named um, has helped a lot, I must say. It's been incredible, clear information. So um, Yeah, I mean, it's been something that's been building up for a long time with what's been happening behind the scenes and all this stuff. And as soon as we hit 2020, it's like, okay, that's it, right? This, is need, this needs to come out. There's going to be these. Uh, there's going to be these these ploys, these agendas that are going to happen. But that's all part of the good thing because that's what's going to lead to uh, the the old corrupts, the old players' demise, is doing these things because they now realize they they really cannot control people anymore. Mm. So their their plans are foiling. Uh, and again, there's just going to be outrage. People are just going to get angry whenever you see a great awakening. You're going to have people getting mad. You're going to have people getting outraged. You're going to have people taking to the streets. You may have protests. You may have riots. You may have a lot of these different things, but this is all part of, it all depends upon the people. It all depends upon, you know, the suppression. It's kind of like if they've been kept under the thumb for a very, very long time, they're going to get angry. They can get violent. They can get enraged. But again, that's all part of, again, the particular feat of, of where you are energetically city to city. So there's some cities that do it peacefully. There's some cities that may be more outrageous in that way. But again, that's all just part of an ebb and flow of what uh, needs to come together to make a change. Um, we were just recently at Adam's calendar with Michael Tillinger with a, a group of about sort of 30 and, you know, had a fantastic time. And we, I mean, I've listened to your videos that you did there, some of the, the channeled history of, of the place. And there were really beautiful um, channeled pieces about just how old Africa is in a way, going mm -hmm. back like millions of years. Yes, you know, it's way one of the most the mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of people, you know, don't think that there's a history before. <laughs> oh, you guys have uh, fossils raining all over the place, right? As soon as I was there, I was astounded by, because Michael was showing Brad, you see all these things, all these fossils just like everywhere. I'm like, how are these people not walking around and seeing like history of hundreds of thousands of years is completely covered all around them? <laughs> it's like it's raining of fossils. You have stone circles, you have all these ancient labyrinths, you have all these different ancient technology that's just surrounding you. And like I'm just looking at some of the local people, like, oh, it's no big deal. Uh, <laughs> like, really? <laughs> so Michael was one of those guys that just knew it, right? He was, he was doing independent 
research and I came along and I was dowsing certain things and I was bringing in Adronis. Michael had a lot of questions and he was just asking about these things. Yeah, there's things that go back 200,000, 300,000 years. There's giants, there's fossils of giants that are around. There's a giant footprint mm. as well too that we went to. There was a giant's heart that was uh, fossilized as well too. So you're looking at so much history. Uh, you can even have like dinosaur remains as well too, right? It's uh, South Africa is just teeming with ancient, ancient history mm. and the way about, yeah, the Anunnaki as well too, ancient mining as well too. Table Mountain was a tree. It was a silicon tree. Oh, no. and it got I can't counted, believe it. That's counted. the first time I've heard that. That's incredible. Yep. So that, yep. that, that was was one huge tree. tree. Yeah, I went right to the top of Table Mountain, started tapping right into it, and I could see it. It was just going all the way up. This guy was massive. It was thousands and thousands of meters tall. And it was almost like watching, watching the movie Avatar, right, where they have the giant tree, the world tree, right? Very much like that. Uh, but it was silicon. It was a silicon tree, otherwise known as a crystal tree, right? Wow. I've, uh, there, we also have one here in BC um, that's not as big, but it was certainly a, a large, a large uh, tree stump, so to speak. Uh, there's another one in uh, Ohio, I believe, right? Death Mountain, right? So all of these are just ancient tree stumps. They're silicon trees, and they were cut down a very, very long time ago. I would say probably going back 50,000, 100,000 years by ancient extraterrestrial mining. They would cut down the tree stump and then they'd have all these minerals that they would be able to collect and they would wow. probably take it to their own planets to, to refine and utilize it for their own needs. So there's a lot of ancient extraterrestrial mining in that way that, that happened upon this planet a long time ago. And a lot of it was uh, imposter Anunnaki, not the real ones, but the, the imposters. Wow. Half human, half reptilian. Yeah. The ones that got kicked out of their planet because they just ones that are kicked out of paradise yeah. and they didn't have a home so they thought oh earth's a good place to take yeah, they, they came here and ravaged it well because earth is just make a hundred of slaves <laughs> right, yeah, it's, it's the crown jewel of the entire universe that's really what it is if we see a crown earth is at the center of the crown jewel and so there's so much here that just is, is pure is pure spirit is pure love is pure joy uh, it's just, it's pure and authentic. And so this is, this has been a planet that's been pillaged for a very, very long time, hundreds of thousands of years. Mm. So Brad, um, in a minute, um, we can open up some questions to the audience. I just wanted to give you a little bit of the context of maybe an area that I was interested in inquiring into. And that is, you know, because we've got so many different cultures and many different languages. So we've actually got 11 official languages in South Africa. That's amazing. Um, and each sort of language has a different sort of galactic history, you could say. And so that's part of why it's so hard to find, I guess, unity in this country, because it's there's such unity and diversity and we need to, you know, how, how are we going to figure that one out? Um, how it's going to all come together, I'm not sure. Well, the, the root languages, the root languages are otherworldly, right? The ones that basically add on to those root languages, those are not, those are human derived, <clears throat> but the ones that are root languages. So if you're looking at Sumerian, if you're looking at Sanskrit, if you're looking at uh, Greek, for example, right? You're looking at some of the root languages. Those basically came off world. And then humanity started to work with them. And then they started creating sub dialects and, and, and other dialects in that way. So that is more human contrived, but it's the ancient languages. It's kind of like they're the pyramids. They're the ones that stand the test of time. So when you look at the root languages, yes, they're very much off world. They're from other dimensions, other realities. Some of them, again, are languages of God, like Sanskrit is basically referred to as the language of God, right? So yes, there's a lot of different uh, preferences relating to other languages. Um, but uh, yeah, really the whole idea is we do speak one language. That's the language of the heart. So, mm. but yeah, I mean, um, uh, it's the same thing that if you're going to China, or if you're going to, um, you know, different places where they're just speaking many different dialects, India, right? Where they're speaking hundreds of different dialects, mm. right? Um, it's just, it's all part of preference. It's, it's telling us and saying, are you guys going to keep playing with language? Or are you going to speak the one language, right? That one language of the heart, that one language of feeling, right? That one language when you go into each other's uh, presence and just feel that, that love, right? That love is the universal love. So I don't know if we'll have languages for too much longer. <clears throat> I think it'll run its course to a particular degree. And I think humanity will certainly in time evolve to where everything will be naturally empathic, naturally telepathic. Mm -hmm. Like the telepathic interfaces that you 
have done, you know, where I guess yeah. the information comes in in picture. Empathic interfacing, yeah, like I've done with yeah. uh, being known as Athena, right, from the Delphi inner earth civilization. So there's inner earth beings. One of them was uh, 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 Athena, who I connect with, and she uh, exists just underneath Delphi, Greece. And she has, she's been kind of a part of an oracle race. They're kind of like albino looking. And they have been working with humanity for a very, very long time, for many thousands, many thousands of years. They've seen civilizations come and go. But yeah, just in the way that I connect with her, I'm mainly, I'm only, I'm mainly just connecting with her astral body. And um, so basically it's, it's connecting with her astral body. She tethers her heart to mine and vice versa. And then I just get this empathic feeling of, of what she wants to talk about. But a lot of the words is basically coming through me. It's just what I feel through her, that I can do what I can to articulate it. Okay. So, I was so should, I bring, should I bring Adronis in and we can start the, start the Q&A? Absolutely. So that would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So I'm pretty sure mostly everybody here is familiar with Adronis. If you're not, uh, Adronis represents another version of myself uh, existing in the star of Sirius A. So uh, he comes through and uh, you'll notice that there's some slight changes in me as I go through a challenge state. I'm not uh, going into a trance. I'm not leaving my body in any way. It's basically just a uh, heightened uh, connectivity channeling where I'm still conscious, but basically it's like my personality is back here and Adronis' personality is up here. So it's like a turntable. And then basically as we interact, uh, Adronis' words become my own. And uh, we have this kind of melding bonding experience. So I'm just channeling Adronis up until August 31st. After that, I will not be channeling him anymore because I'm gonna be moving more into direct spirit communication, which is even far more powerful than channeling, right? So good things, better things are gonna come. <laughs> but people are still very, very uh, romantically connected to Adronis. So this is why I'm doing this kind of last month tour with him to bring about all this information so that something new and beautiful can come out of it afterwards. So anyways, thank you everybody for being here. I will go ahead and take a moment to bring Adronis in and we'll get started. <clears throat> and if you do have questions for Adronis, make sure you say your name first and then you can ask your question, okay? Here we go. Tara. Soul star see At this time, we bid you greetings and thank you very much for the opportunity of this interaction today. I am Adronis of Sirius, sending love, appreciation, and gratitude to all who are tuning into this broadcast through your internet collective consciousness. We thank you, and how may we assist any of you today? Um, greetings, Adronis. It's Amanda. Hello. <laughs> thank you for being with us on this Lion's Gate in Africa. Yes. Yes. Um, my question, and then I'm going to open it to the other people in our group, is connected to the lions, the white lions of Africa and the Syrians. And if there's any kind of particular sort of important information for us as, as sort of South Africans um, around the white lions or the lions in general. Well, to understand the lions, what does the lions symbolize to you in regards to your ancient history? What do they symbolize? The Lyran race. No, we're not talking about Lyran. a race. We're talking oh, okay. about the nature, about what they symbolize. Okay, so... There are guardians. Bridge, yes. It's a guardian nature. So when you're looking at the lions, the idea is that Africa herself is guarded by the divine. Wow. And that's the nature of the lions themselves. So yes, you do have Lyran civilizations. You do have Pleiadian civilizations. You do have Syrian civilizations. In fact, we speak to the ones that are the lion beings. They are known as the Novans to us. And so again, they too are, shall we say, lion humanoid in that way. 
So yes, they too have visited your planet throughout Egypt and in throughout, Af throughout South Africa as well too, and throughout various other areas, China even as well too. So basically when you're looking at this, the nature of the white lines, well, white represents the color of spirit. So there is a divine guardianship upon the entire continent of Africa. Simply because this is the reservoir of life. This is what represents Africa in regards to its ancient nature. Going back many millions of years, it was again the seedbed to where much of the life that you have today still exists. So again, there were two of these particular continents. One was the continent of Mu, and the other was the continent of Africa. These were, as you would say, the motherland. When Mu was destroyed, Africa was again left. It was almost like looking at two kidneys. You had a left kidney and you had a right kidney. When the left kidney was destroyed, the right kidney again still remains intact. And that is what's representing the nature of the divine guardianship, where again, spirit is watching over the, again, seabed, one of the original seabeds that was the cradle of life. Wow, that's amazing. Um, there's been a, sorry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take another question, but I just want to add, there's been a sort of a, in just a little bit north of South Africa, there's been this kind of portal discovered that they think might have been a covered portal to uh, Atlantis. I don't know if that's at all possible on the continent. Yes, you also have portals that are offshore that can connect to other places such as Atlantis. But again, many of those, shall we say, way portals have been destroyed. So in that sense, the husk of it remains, but the idea in that sense of it still operating is still debatable. Because again, as you know, Atlantis no longer exists. It exists submerged under your ocean. So the whole idea in that sense is if that way portal was actually able to activate, it would go into an area that would not be too habitable for humans. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's... But understand you have many different way portals throughout South Africa alone, many. Some of them that stance lead to different dimensional Earths. So in that sense, you are looking and going into other different planets of Earth herself. But again, shall we say, with different themes attached. Wow, that's fantastic. That's beautiful. Thank but you. But many of them have been deactivated. So is, is Adam's calendar still in a deactivated no, state? It is deactivated. No. Yeah. The majority of the portals that you once had that were technological are deactivated. Okay. Uh, Tish, you can go. Beautiful day, Adronis. Hello. I, I would like to ask, as Africans, Yes. What is our spiritual purpose? Well, we would say as human beings, what do you feel you would like to have as your purpose? Because here's the thing. The purpose is something that represents a self-drive. It's self-empowered, you see. Many of you come to the earth because this is a school. This is a university. This is teaching you how to be God. That is why you come to the earth. You come here to look at all of these different things, everything that represents life, everything that represents reality, looking in that sense about how people feel disconnected. And you are looking to see how certain events within your life have caused you to feel disconnected as well, too. And how, again, a lot of this comes through impermanence, how a lot of this comes through the nature of the mind. And it's basically to empower the mind, balance the mind, and then completely release the mind. So that you go back to God, so that you return to God. This is a school of angels. This is a school of gods in training, where you are learning more about yourselves. Not so much looking at the purpose relating to what am I here to do in life, et cetera, et cetera. We've pretty much already have told you. But in that sense, many will look in the idea of humanity and say, well, what's the purpose of humanity? To be, to exist, to thrive here to advance yourself past you feeling that you are just a flesh body, that you are just mind, to move you into the abidance of returning to God. Because this is what we have called you from day one, gods in training. 
Many of you, again, do not feel that because you stay very much into the nature of logic and practicality. And that will only get you so far. To move yourself deeper into this is to look into the idea about how you can cast off everything that you think you know and start listening to the earth because here's what the ancient Africans did. They were always being guided by the earth. They were not so heavily logical. They were not so heavily intellectual. The ancient Africans upon this planet connected so deeply with the earth that they were actually symbiotic with the planet. They knew exactly where to place their villages. They knew exactly where to work together. They helped the earth and bringing fertility into her by utilizing ceremonies, by working with the great depths of their souls and interacting together with the land, forming equilibrium with the land and with the animals, blessing their food, creating such fertility for their crops, for their food, creating, as you would say, an oasis representing the paradise that they were upon. They were very heart-centered. So it's now a matter of being able to go back into that yourself, because many of you in that sense have followed this path after the destruction of Atlantis to decide we're going to start walking the intellectual path. We're going to start looking at the logical path, the practical path, the path of the ego. And that's what you've been walking for several thousands of years. And this is what it's gotten you. You see? So it's about being able to say, this hasn't worked. But what has worked is when we look at the indigenous civilizations, when we see how heartfelt they are, when they return to nature, when they connect with the earth, when they work symbiotically with their mother. Don't you feel that is a lot more wonderful to experience, to open up the heart and start working with the earth on a deeper feeling level. So what's happening right now is you are beginning to make those first steps, transitioning out of an intellectual, egoic culture and slowly starting to move into a heart-centered culture like your ancestors before you, all right? Thank you. Somebody else got a question? Amanda, it's Amitha, if I may ask a question, please. Uh, namaste, Adonis. It's wonderful, Hello, Amitha. To yes. it's wonderful to reconnect with you. I have a question about Adam's calendar. Yes. I know you said it, it's been deactivated now, but yes. who, what type of beings uh, utilize that portal? Was it a dark portal? Was it a light portal? And where did, where did it lead to? Did it lead to All the right. stars or where? It was in that sense, another earth that was conjunct together with your earth. Now, again, it is what you would know as Anunnaki maidens that first utilized the portal system upon Adam's calendar. The maidens in that ones were the ones that assisted in the birth of humanity. And so this goes back approximately 200,000 years of your time. So again, it returns back into where everything upon your planet, everything that represents the ancient construct represents that of the light. So these were again, emissaries, maidens that came upon the planet and they were the ones that assisted in the early beginning births that would therefore spawn humanity. So that is where, as we stated, South Africa represents the cradle of life because these were part of the beginnings of the human race. Thank you very much for that. If you don't mind, please, Adonis, uh, this is my, I have two very short questions. They're pretty 3D, so forgive me for that. Okay, there's this thing, this so-called, you know, that word begins with V, that's spreading across the earth right now. You mean vaccinations? That, yeah. So in this country, South Africa, there's talk about another fourth wave uh, that's going to come around in October. Do you see that happening? No, not really. That will be discussed and there will be attempts to bring it out. But again, here's the thing. A lot of what's happening upon your planet is basically having these fear propaganda agendas exposed. 
So the whole idea here is that they're planning on doing a third wave, a fourth wave, a fifth wave, a sixth wave, a seventh wave, et cetera. But the whole idea, as Brad has shared with you, is that there is a lot of shifts happening behind the scenes where there's not really going to be that type of, shall we say, authority faculty that is going to still remain in power. It's being stripped down as we speak. So again, you will go through the summer and the fall, still looking into these feelings about vaccinations and agendas and trying to create other waves and trying to create so many lockdowns. But again, this is all part of the plan. Do you know why this happens? Because it triggers awakening. That's what it does. It gets people so disgruntled. It gets them completely in the feeling of opposing all of this. That's its purpose. We would say again that many of your dark players, as you would call them, really aren't even in power that much anymore. They are dwindling in numbers. A lot of these particular campaigns are being permitted to still run because it's still bringing about a greater awakening of people. Do you know why it's so important to have a greater awakening? Because the truth is about to be revealed. And it's very important for as many people to be as awakened as possible so that this does not cause a panic you are eventually in time going to realize who is behind all of these agendas. You are eventually in time going to see all of these people who have been upon these agendas being detained and being removed from these states of power. There's a lot of secrets that are going to be coming out. And a lot of that feels like it's shining upon the year of 2022. But right now there is an attempt to try to awaken as many people as possible for these bombshell announcements to be made. That's why you're getting these feelings upon your media where there's going to be a third wave, a fourth wave, a fifth wave, et cetera. All of that is being done intentionally to waken people up and saying, we've had enough of this. We're not doing this anymore. We are going to stand up against this. Exactly. That's the entire purpose for this agenda is to get people to wake up and realize that what has been happening here has not been for their highest, best good, and they're standing up against it. That's why these agendas have been permitted to continue to happen. Oh, bless you, Adronis. Uh, I have other questions, but I will ask later. I think there are other people now who wish to ask. So thank you so much for now. Anita, would you like to go? <coughs> thank you, Amanda. Uh, thank you, Adronis, for being here. Uh, it's an honor to have you in our presence, uh, and Brad as well. Um, I'm from Ireland. Uh, Amanda has has put out the call for, for people to join, so I'm just grateful to be here. But um, just uh, a few of the members in Connecting Consciousness and I had a, a few weeks ago uh, an experience with uh, light ships. We, we gathered and sort of, we called them in. One of the members has um, frequent uh, visits with light ships and elementals. And also when I go out at night, I, I can sort of put out the intention and they come for me and my daughters. Do you feel, um, or sorry, when do you feel that um, we will actually have these, these beings able to actually land on earth? Uh, do you see that happening in, in, in the not too distant future? Or is there a, um, is it dependent upon our vibration and the vibration of the collective? Thank well, you. it certainly is not at this current time, because you have to look at the state of your world. State of your world is going through, again, a mass awakening. This is the worst time to bring about any landings, you see. Mm. So again, there are still a lot of propaganda. Basically, what's happening is spiritual warfare. This is what you would term as your Armageddon. You're living through it right now, in this very moment. That's the last time when anybody would decide to land on your planet, when you're going through Armageddon. So right now, there is a cleanup process. You still have quite a few years to begin working and cleaning up everything relating just to the corruption upon your earth altogether. Once that corruption is out of the way, you want to start working with rehabilitating your planet. You want to clear away all of the old industries that have contaminated and polluted your planet. There is a hands-off policy that all star civilizations that are again connected with your earth are abiding to follow. And that is the law of non-interference. You can be made aware of us by calling us in, by having sightings of us in that way, and by us interacting with you in some particular form and degree. 
But we are not here to land upon your planet and basically take on your problems. That is not the way. So it still will be quite some time before you have the idea of what you would know as global first contact. You have a lot of work to do before that time comes about. So we would say possibly around post 2038, around 2050 or 2055. These are again just probabilities. But again, many of you are uplifting. You are shifting yourself into a new construct of what humanity actually is. You're again being the ground crew. Many of you are already aware of your star family, your star ancestors, because you come from those civilizations. You have decided to leave an old body behind and you are incarnating into a new human body coming here and doing ground labor, doing ground work. And you're doing it right now. This again is why this mass awakening is happening. You're helping people to heal. You're empowering others. You're assisting others. You're working together with others. Many of you term this as being a star seed in that way, that you come here upon this planet and that you're working together as these seeds coming into this giant bed to grow new fruit. And that's what's taking place. You are not here to reconvene with your ancestors just yet. When this time comes, when you leave the physical body, you will return to those civilizations that you are a part of. That's simply how it's going to be. Because again, you leave a body in stasis and you come here and you occupy a human body and you take care of a lot of the, as you would say, internal housekeeping upon the planet. That is what you're here to do. So again, there's still a lot of work to do. And you're just starting to see, as you would say, the eye of the storm relating to all this work here that you have to do. So again, that's what's taking place. In time, yes, there will be contact, but you have to see how your planet is improving. You have to make peace with your planet. You have to make peace with yourselves before anything like that can even happen. Because again, we already know that sweet spot that you will come into to say, all right, now it's time we can create an alliance together. We can work together as a mutual civilization, as one. But that time has not yet approached. There's a lot for you to do. You've got to work with your planet. You've got to work with each other. You've got to work with yourselves. Those are the three criteria. All right. Thank you very much. That makes very, very much sense. Thank you. Next question. Well, I've, I, oh, Roy, yes. <laughs> you can go for it, Roy. Greetings, Adronis. I am Roy. Hello, Roy. My, my question is, it's my comprehension based on my research that we are on a timeline on 3D reality that the earth will very soon approach a point of inflection or a polarity shift from the negative paternalistic cycle of approximately 13,000 years to a positive feminine cycle of evolution. Uh, when I say my comprehension is that it will be within the next five or six years maximum that the earth will undergo, physically undergo, cosmically undergo very substantial changes interacting with the sun and the galactic cycle. Do we have a limited time available as humanity to get our act together before this processional equ equinoctial cycle event occurs? All right. You have to understand that you're experiencing that cycle right now. It is not coming later. 
Everything in regards to what you have described is indeed happening, but it's happening right now. This is why you're going through a great awakening upon your planet. Because this is all part of the idea of the opposition of the old artificialities beginning to drop away. So basically, you're looking at this parasite that has been upon the planet for many thousands of years that is now being opposed against. And again, through humanity's efforts and a lot of the cosmic administration behind the scenes, and of course, of the divine energies that old parasite is going to fade away. It's going to be literally extracted from the earth and dissolved. That's what's taking place right now. Now you're still riding out this wave for quite a few years yet, yes. Now the whole idea in regards to the interaction with your sun, your sun is not what you think it is. It is not a hot mass of fire. The sun itself is a living well. And therefore, it works together through radiation. And that radiation comes upon your planet, existing as sonoluminescence. And it is that sonoluminescence that actually generates the heat and the light upon your planet. Your sun has no heat and no light of its own at all. All the heat and all the light are generated through its own radiation rays that penetrate the atmosphere of your planet, creating, in that sense, intense oscillations of vibrations per second that creates a sunlight that actually exists within your atmosphere. The sunlight is a local phenomenon. It's not actually coming from your sun. Your sun, again, is this ball, as you would say, of radiation, of, again, different forms of etheric plasma, of water as well. When you look at solar plumes, you're not looking at fire. You're looking at, again, water more than anything. And that is, again, coming upon your planet. And it has an etheric plasma effect. And it's basically coming upon the planet. And it creates sonoluminescence. That is the nature about how your sun operates. It is not what your scientists believe it is. You do not have solar flares. You have solar plumes. And yes, that is a great mass of energy, and that is magnetizing upon the Earth, but it is not harming the Earth at all. When the sun, therefore, shoots out these solar plumes and is being absorbed by the Earth, this is bringing about a cleansing effect. This is a rejuvenation effect. This is not harming your magnetic field, as your scientists admit. It is not creating disasters. It is creating this rejuvenation. It's like a flushing that's taking place. The earth basically encapsulates all of that energy and uses it to recycle itself and purging out all of the old debris that no longer serves. So it is going through a personal internal detoxification. So that is the nature of the sun. It has no heat. It has no light of its own. It is basically creating the property of sonoluminescence upon the atmosphere of all celestial bodies that therefore bring about the appropriate light and heat to your worlds. It is not through the idea of the heat and the light of the sun, because there is none. All right. All right, thank you. Questions? Andrea, you can go. Andre, pleased to be here this evening. We have a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Could you speak closer to your microphone? Can you hear me better? Yes, please proceed. Good evening, Adonis. It's Andre. Pleasure to oh. be here with yourself and Brad. Yes. Um, just a question from my side is, um, we as Earth beings, are we going to go back to uh, the teachings of the early Atlantean um, cultures. You're moving in that direction, yes. Not right away, but eventually, as you look into your future generations, when you're going down about five, six, seven, eight generations down the road, that'll be the benchmark to where you start returning to that. But again, for those of you who may not understand, the early benchmark of Atlantean civilizations were very much in that 
what you would term as indigenous living. That's where you're moving into. There will still be technology upon your planet, but it will be technology that works through consciousness. It'll be very much like the early Atlantean civilization, where it was very much in a golden age and people were working together. And the technology was often very crystal based. And they would actually work together with the consciousness of the earth, where it was very, very natural for you to speak to your higher selves all through these apparatuses that were contained around Atlantis. It was very much in that sense, a spiritual society. So yes, in time, you'll start to move in that benchmark. But like we said, at this current time, there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of old shedding of an old skin. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Okay, who's ever next can just go. Tish? Hi, Adranis. This is Letitia again. Yes. Adranis, I recently heard or was told that there will be no more reincarnations. So if we're talking about generations down the line, where it will still be a few more generations before we see the arrival of the galactic beings um, introducing themselves. Um, is this true? Are we, are we to anticipate that we will have future reincarnations on this journey of evolution? You have to understand what the nature of what reincarnation actually is. What is the purpose of reincarnation, Tish? To become enlightened beings. No. Ooh. It's to correct the mistake of death. That is what reincarnation is to do. It is to basically pick up where you left off and continue to work together to strive to become in abidance with God. That's the idea. As long as you are part of the mind sphere and you exist within the mind sphere, the collective unconscious, as you term it, the great mind of God, and you are still learning through the great mind, you will incarnate again and again and again and again to whatever particular planet suits you based upon the lessons, based upon the learning that you are here to learn. All reincarnation is, is to correct the mistake of death. Thank you. So if some of you are confused by that, you have to look into what your ancient sages what your ancient yogis, what your ancient mystics have realized. They have transcended death. It is not about trying to make your physical form immortal. It is the idea that prior to its own perishing, you have harmonized your soul. Your soul is in harmony with God. It is in harmony with the self. And now you abide in God. And now you abide in God's self. And that is what liberates you past the body, past the mind. You get off the wheels of the physical body, of time, of space, of causality, of karma. All of that is now completely transcended. And you return to God. You are absorbing yourself into God. God is absorbing itself into you. And now you are as one. That's the idea. That is you transcending the mind sphere. For as long as you exist in the mind sphere and you still have to go through this process, you'll incarnate over and over and over again because it's compensating for you to actually go into the incarnation, learn from this nature of mind, to therefore overcome mind and return back into the abidance of God. This is why we say you're gods in training and therefore being God. That's the nature of coming here. This is why Earth is a school. She is a grand university. And you have all come here to learn how to transcend the mind, how to dissolve the mind and bring it back into the nature of the self, where you are completely infathomable where you are in that, shall we say, presence of perfection. You are eternal happiness. 
Eternal happiness does not come through an object. It does not come through a person. It does not come through an event. It does not come through a place. It is within yourself. This is altogether the grand teaching. You have to understand where the source of happiness comes from. Once you understand where the source of happiness comes from, you abide there. As you abide there, everything relating to conflicts, everything relating to calamities, to tragedies, vanish. You no longer feel it. You now start walking the path of a yogi. You now start walking the path of a sage, of a mystic, of an ancient master. Because that is exactly what they did. Look at your Jesus. Look at your Buddha. Look at your Mahavatar Babaji. Look at your Krishna. What they were able to accomplish. Do you think they were the only ones who were able to accomplish this? No. Because they are teaching you how you can accomplish this as well. That is where you no longer need to come back to correct the mistake of death. Where you no longer need to wander from death to death. You now have eternal life. And this is what Jesus was talking about. To have eternal life is to abide in God, is to abide in the self, is to completely dissolve the mind entirely. And that is what you will learn when you understand the true source of happiness. All right. We thank you. Questions? Hello, Adrona. This is Blessing. Blessing, um, hello. Yes. Is it possible to have a personal message for me? Is it possible to what? To have a personal message for me. A personal message for you. Well, we like your name. <laughs> All right. What is it that you're going through right now that you feel you would like to have some guidance on? Almost every aspect of my life I need guidance on. I All want right. to connect with my soul family. I've come uh, from a very narcissistic. Here's what we would say, Blessing. Where is your eternal yes. source of happiness? Where is it? Where does it exist? I don't know. Right here. In it's connecting right with my soul here. family, yes. We're not talking about soul family. We're talking about the eternal source of happiness to where all love, all happiness extends from, including that of your soul family. It is not about looking at a soul family and thinking that if I go there, then I'll be happy. No, it's about the idea that as I am happy, everything becomes revealed to me in life. And so Brad is going to share with each and every one of you today a simple mm. method where you are going to learn where eternal happiness stems from. And you will be able mm. to have it demonstrated upon yourselves and say, oh my goodness, is that how simple it is? I have these conflicts and now they've completely washed away. This is what we're going to share with all of you. So we would say, stay tuned. That's our message to you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What is your current time? Um, it's 10 minutes before seven. So if you want to conclude the channeled section, that would give us 45 minutes or 40 minutes. We will take, we will take one more question before we conclude. Okay. Anyone else? No. Isabel? Hello, Adronis. This is Isabel. Yes. Um, I have a question on uh, something completely off topic. Um, it's within the concept of remote viewing. Um, are we overstepping a boundary by uh, viewing a person or a place? How, we do, how do we know if it's ethical? All right. That's not really off topic, but very <laughs> well. Now understand that when you're working with remote viewing, now this can be a challenging question to answer. It's no more different than the idea of one who has psychic impressions where they will in that sense, look at a loved one and they may see that loved one dying in that way. And they want to look and seeing what they can do to save that person. But therefore there's no information that supports that. So in that sense, they simply act upon their own thoughts. They act upon their own choosing. 
So basically what happens is there's a type of remote influence. So if you see a place that you feel, oh my goodness, maybe I shouldn't be looking at that. Well, if that was the case, you wouldn't have that experience. Experience grants you the capability to look at what you look at, to basically have that awareness of that. So again, if that was not the case, you would not experience it. So whatever it is that you experience is all part of you experiencing it. There are no, as you would say, boundaries within creation. It's only through your own ego. Your own ego creates these boundaries. And that's what shuts off any other potential for you to look at experiences that can enlighten you further. But what happens is your emotions get in the way. And as soon as your emotions get in the way, the ego starts to flare up. As soon as the air ego flares up, now you're seeing these confinements. Now you're seeing these boundaries. Now you're seeing these borders. Guess who does that? Your own ego. It's not spirit. Spirit has nothing to hide from you. If that was the case, you'd be looking at a very different type of reality. But that's not the nature. Everything that has represented confinement within yourself has come through the ego. It has never come through spirit. It has never come from the divine. The divine says, all of this is yours. But the ego says, no, 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 no. I got to put these boundaries here. I got to put these walls here. I got to put these fences up here. I got to put these gates here, etc." When you emotionally react to what you are receiving, you are now out of the flow. As you're out of the flow, you therefore create that wall. It is only until you deal with that emotion and you harmonize it that you can therefore return and therefore more encouraging experiences can come about based upon what you look at. Nothing is off limits relating to the nature of creation, but the ego has limits and that is what's confining you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We thank you very much all for your questions. We will now take a moment to return to the conduit. One moment, please. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. <laughs> so yes, as Adronis was talking about, uh, and I was telling Amanda this as well too, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's known as a group EQ method, okay? Uh, now this will not be recorded, just so you guys know, right? This is okay. just for you guys here. 